In this video, we will derive the Hagen Poisson equation, named after the German engineer Gotthilf Heinrich Ludwig Hagen and the French physicist Jean Leonard Marie Poisson. This equation tells us that for a realistic fluid, including internal friction, the fluid transfer through a cylindrical tube scales with the fourth power of the radius. So if you double the radius of a pipe, 16 times as much fluid will flow through. Before we start, let us quickly talk about the effects of internal friction, or viscosity, in a fluid. For an ideal fluid with no viscosity, the fluid will flow through the pipe with the same velocity everywhere. If we include viscosity, then the fluid velocity near the tube will be slower, because the wall does not move, and basically has zero velocity. To be more precise, we will see that the velocity vectors follow a parabolic shape along the diameter of the tube. Now let's start the derivation. In order to derive the hagen poisson equation, we will need two steps. First, we will calculate the fluid velocity inside the tube, which gives us a v of r. The next step is then to integrate this over the cross-sectional area to get the total volume transfer per time. We start with the assumption that the fluid is in equilibrium, so we have a steady flow and nothing is accelerating. In that case, the force due to a pressure difference that would accelerate the fluid is balanced by the friction force due to viscosity, which would decelerate the fluid. The pressure force is simply given by delta P times A, where delta P is the pressure difference between one end of the tube and the other end, and A denotes the cross section of the tube in our case, a circle. The force due to friction is given by minus eta a times the derivative of velocity with respect to x. Here, eta is the dynamic viscosity, which has units of pascal seconds. A typical example to know the order of magnitude of eta could be water at 20 degrees Celsius, which has a dynamic viscosity of around one millipascal second. Next, a has a different meaning here. It denotes the area of a streamline with the same velocity. In our example, this would be the lateral surface of this cylinder here, because everything outside the cylinder has a lower velocity and everything inside the cylinder has a higher velocity. Along the surface of the cylinder, the velocity is constant, and that's the area that we need. Finally, x is a placeholder for the direction towards a streamline with a different velocity. In our case, this is the radial direction. Putting everything together, we get minus eta times the cylinder surface area 2r pi l times the derivative of velocity must be equal to p1 minus p2 times the cross-sectional area r squared pi. We can solve for the velocity by integrating over r, which is a simple integration. The integration constant c is determined via the boundary condition that the velocity at the edge of the tube must be zero, since the walls don't move. This leads to the following result, which shows the parabolic shape we mentioned earlier. Now we can start the second part of the derivation. We want to know how much liquid flows through the tube per time. This is given by the integral of velocity integrated over the cross-sectional area. To see this, consider one small volume of fluid, given by dx, dy, dz. This volume moves to the right in x direction, so the change in volume is given by dx over dt times dy and dz. dx over dt is velocity, and in order to cover the whole pipe, we need to integrate over dy and dz. In polar coordinates, dA is given by r dr d phi. The integration over phi gives us 2 pi, and the integration over r results in uppercase r to the power of 4 over 4. Now we've got the hagen poisson equation. The flow of the liquid in a cylindrical tube is proportional to the radius to the power of 4. This has important consequences, for instance, for blood circulation in the human body. By doubling or halving the radius of an artery, the human body can control how much blood flows through it by a factor of 16. As a final note, if we consider just an infinitesimal portion of the tube, we can replace the pressure difference divided by the tube length by a pressure gradient. 
but that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.